Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. And on today's menu, more preliminary round competition. Mike Adamley along with Larry Zonka. Mike, we're opening up with a joust, and that's always exciting. And ready to give the contenders the wake-up call, it'll be Siren. Our women will start things off. First up for our contenders, Dr. Elizabeth Pepe. The oldest contender in the competition, 38 years old, a physician from De Leon Springs, Florida. The rules here in the joust, very straightforward. Contenders have 30 seconds to knock the gladiator off the platform. If they can pull off that improbable feat, it's worth 10 points. Let's do it. It was Siren getting in the first shot. Again, contenders have 30 seconds to see what they can do, but it was all Siren. Eight seconds, the knockout. Siren with the first and the last. Dr. Pepe obviously looking for a way out, but that just proves the point. You can run, but you can't hide on American Gladiators. The Samuel Goldman Company presents the American Gladiators. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with NFL Hall of Famer Larry Zonka. Glad you could join us here at the home of the Gladiators. But believe me, Larry, there is no way Turbo, Diamond, and company are going to be rolling out any red carpets, especially with this first event. Well, Siren's already established who owns the turf around here. But up now is Yvonne Montavo from the Bronx. She's a karate instructor. And let's see if that martial arts background helps her in the joust. So far, it's all Siren. Oh, Siren. <laughs> With a powerful left come around, sweeps Yvonne right from the platform, almost like a twig or a leaf on the wind. At least Yvonne wasn't afraid to stand toe to toe. Actually, it was Siren's balance that won the day. The men are next. And up first in this preliminary round matchup, it'll be Spencer Street. 25 years old from Lafayette, Louisiana, a graduate student at the University of Southwestern Louisiana, getting his master's degree in petroleum geology. Well, he's going to run into a rock in a big way because he's got to face off against Saber. Spencer said he was going to start off aggressively. He managed to deliver that first blow, but Saber's taking over from there. 20 seconds to go, Spencer has adopted a defensive position. Now he's going on the offense. Sabre's got him down on his knees, on his back. He's gonna try to get up and get up, he does. What a match. Spencer Street, if he goes the distance, he'll get five points for a draw against Sabre, and he's done it. Woo! Kid can dish it out as well as take it. He had to take a lot at the hands of Sabre. One of the reasons Spencer Street tried out for the competition and wanted to be a contender was the David Goliath aspect. That time David didn't slay Goliath, but he he hung in there. Hung in there, the toe round. to toe. Our next contender, the first deaf athlete we've ever had here on the American Gladiators. His name is Willie Cooley, 30 years old from Fairfax, Virginia. Works for Federal Express but an outstanding athlete, played some semi-pro football, had a tryout with the world champion Washington Redskins. We're gonna see a lot of amazing things that this kid can do before this show is over. Right now, he's got a tall task in front of him, actually a big wide-body task. His name is Sabre. On guard! And because Willie can't hear, there's his interpreter, Norman Gallopin, giving him the signal to start. He is clearly on the defensive from the opening whistle, and Sabre makes short work of Willie Cooley. Now Willie looking for those hand signals might make him just a count late off the mark. Sabre wastes no time. He goes for the head right away. Willie is able to maintain his balance, but never really launches much of an offensive before Sabre sweeps him from the platform. But again, a gallant effort on Willie's part. Sabre just a bit too strong. 
Hard football, hard wrestling, breakthrough and conquer is next for contenders and gladiators alike. And what an entrance by our gladiator Electra. She'll be joined by Siren. Siren will be inside the conquer ring and Electra will man the breakthrough portion of this event. First up for the contenders, Yvonne Montalvo. She is yet to get on the scoreboard. As we mentioned, she's a martial arts instructor back in the Bronx, New York. And here's a picture of Yvonne with one of her students. She's got that good high kick action. Ow. Let's see if she can display a little of that here, at least maybe not too much in Electra's face, but <laughs> here in Breakthrough and Conquer. Got a chance for the contender. They're in 10 points, five if they're successful ready, in either one of the two ready, portions of this event. Yvonne looking to make a move. Electra's got her cornered, and out of the bounds she goes. So no points there. Yvonne having trouble making up her mind and just what her move's going to be. As a result, Electra just powers her and throws her out of bounds. Now it's on to the conquer ring. She's got 15 seconds to knock any portion of Siren's body outside that conquer ring. Siren mighty powerful. Yvonne had the lower leg there for a moment. She shouldn't have let go. Five seconds to go. And time has expired. Siren just too big and powerful to get out of that ring. So a shout out for our two gladiators. Now our doctor will step into the fray. We mentioned the oldest Get contender ready. here on the show, 38 ready, years old, ready. Dr. Elizabeth Pepe, here in Breakthrough. Oh. And Electra wasn't buying that move. Again, yeah, no exact move. A little lean here, a little lean there. Our contenders have to plant that leg and take it back. Still, she'll get one more chance to pick up points here in the conquering. Siren again, holding court. And trying to hold her ground, but she can't. Something of a surprise there. The dot gets Siren off balance, and she's the first on the scoreboard here. Doc cleans clock, I love it. I don't think anyone was more surprised than Doc. She butts heads with Siren up high and loses, but then she manages to get under Siren's arms and get her momentum going the other way, and out of the ring, Siren goes. Saber and Cyclone taking the floor for the Gladiators here in Breakthrough and Conquer. Cyclone will be manning the breakthrough portion of this event. It'll be Saber inside the Conquer ring. Won't happen. The man they have to face, Willie Cooley, 30 years old from Fairfax, Virginia. As we mentioned before, the first deaf athlete we've ever had here on American Gladiators, but he is a, an exceptional athlete. Wouldn't tell me what he had planned, said he had a secret move. We're about to see it. Oh, he was able to tightrope his way down that sideline. Cyclo had the angle, but Willie had that extra burst of speed to propel him across that goal line. Five that's, points there. That's his secret move, that extra burst of speed. Now Sabre in the conquer ring. Willie's got 15 seconds to get the job done. Sabre trying not to be tied up and doing a good job of it. And time expires. Willie can't get the job done, but he does walk away from breakthrough and conquer with five points. And despite giving up 50 pounds in body weight, Willie undaunted in that ring. He didn't back down. Saber doing a fine job, almost like a judo instructor. He meets every action with a counter action or a reversal, and as a result, denies Willie the big win. Now it's Spencer Street's turn, sporting a little mouse under his left eye, but this guy's been hit before. He was co-captain of his Get Trinity ready. University football ready, team ready. back in Texas. Oh, one move too many. Cyclone's got him wrapped up. He gives him all that one okie doke and... Well, here you see Street make a great move. Right there, he plants his left foot, but Cyclone stays right with him. Great defense, matching him step for step. But then here we go again. Now Street's gonna reverse his field and come back, and we're gonna have the same scenario. But this time, a little different outcome. 
Street plants his left foot again and throws the same fake, but Cyclone commits to it this time, and as a result, gets left in the dust. Now from ground level, this was a case where quickness won out over strength, and as you mentioned, Larry, Cyclone might have done himself a favor if he had moved up field. Now Mr. Street meeting Sabre in the conquer ring. Look how fast Spencer is. He's trying to overcome Sabre with speed. Sabre's got plenty of that. Time runs out on Spencer Street. Sabre, stainless seal and razor sharp. Not again, ever, never. So Sabre making it a long day for our two contenders after two events. Spencer Street with a five point lead on Willie Cooley. Up next, Skytrack. Gladiator Arena and the crowd can look straight up for this one. It's called Skytrack. Seven tons of hardware and Velcro. In the preliminary round competition, Spencer Street with a five point lead on Willie Cooley. And there's the lane assignments. The object here, quite simple, to race back and forth this winding sky track course. The winning contender will pick up 10 points. The man who finishes second will get five, and they're off. Spencer Street in lane one, our gladiator, our newest member of our team, Cyclone in lane two, and Willie Cooley in lane three. Right now, it's all Cyclone. Spencer Street said he's right at home in this event. Feels like he's on the floor and everyone else is upside down. They must touch that red line now. Turn around again. Spencer Street from Lafayette, Louisiana. 25 years old, tearing it up here. Willie Cooley having his problems. He said he didn't expect to do well in this event. Spencer Street is going to win going away, and he'll pick up 10 points despite the best efforts of Cyclone. Well, he said this was his worst event. He hates it. We'll look for him in the next event. In fact, he's still finishing the course. <laughs> we may have to send help out to find Willie. Spencer, on the other hand, doing a pretty good job maintaining his balance. He needs to use his feet more in those turns. Can't emphasize that enough. Well, hopefully our Women have gotten that advice. Dr. Elizabeth Pepe in lane one. She has a five-point lead over Yvonne Montalvo. Our gladiator, the Zapster, will be in lane two, and our karate instructor from the Bronx, Yvonne, will be in lane three. Gladiator, ready! They're on their marks and set to go. One of the problems of blowing out fast in that straightaway is that once you reach the first bend in this course, you can overdo it and throw yourself into a spin. Right now, Zap having her way. She will be the first to touch that red line. Elizabeth is there as well, and now she has the lead. Dr. Pepe Science says she finds this a little disorienting. With that pilot's background, obviously she's adapted well. Yvonne having all kinds of problems getting coordinated. Zap down the center. She's going to cross the finish line first. Dr. Elizabeth Pepe will pick up five points for being the first contender across. Mike, both of our contenders are pretty well spent. The Zapster seems to have everything under control. With Corvon, she's still working on making her way in. And as you mentioned earlier, at the outset of this race, everyone's speeding into that first turn and everyone losing control have to slow down and utilize your feet in order to stabilize yourself in these turns. So two events by the boards. Event number three is next, and it's swing shot. Event number four in this preliminary round competition, swing shot. Our women are standing atop the platforms. They'll go first. Two gladiators versus two contenders. Dr. Elizabeth Pepe with a 10-point lead on Yvonne Montalvo. For the gladiators, it'll be Zap holding fourth. Her partner will be Electra. Once again, this is the game where the contenders have 60 seconds to spring from their platforms, reach to the sky, and try to grab one of those red, blue, or yellow balls. Everybody launches at once. A simultaneous meeting at that center post. 
Not having a little trouble getting back to her platform. Doc Pepe making a great jump, picks up a ball in the process. Go! Puts it in her mouth and then puts it into the scoring pod. See our gladiators time their jumps to arrive at the pendulum the same time as the contenders. Great job there by Electra keeping the doctor away. Yvonne's got one now. Oh, can't she get it in? Oh, loses the platform and takes a, a headshot from Doc Pepe. Our spotters are allowed to assist them back to the platform. Time running down. Can't she get it in? Doc's got another one. Can she get it in? Could be close. Right down to the wire. It has to be in the container. It's there. Not a bad match, Larry. Not bad at all. High-flying maneuvers. And guess what? Yvonne's finally on this scoreboard. Doc Pepe has her moments. Here she goes up, snags a yellow ball. Let's take a look at it through her helmet cam. You see her strip the ball off. She puts it in her mouth, much like a chipmunk going back to the tree with a walnut. That's what it looks like. But I'll tell you what, it wasn't pretty, but it worked. Effective with a capital E. And now our male gladiators are set to defend that center post from our two contenders. It'll be Turbo and Viper. And Viper happens to be the subject of our Ask a Gladiator segment. Jeff Parrott from Arizona writes, Dear Viper Man, what kind of music do you enjoy? You know, it doesn't really matter as far as uh, the music. It depends on the mood and what I want to get done. If I'm going out to compete, it's going to be some Beastie Boys or some, uh, some hard rock. If I want to chill out, it's going to be something very mellow. Viper hardly looks mellow now. His task to keep our two contenders away from that scoring post. Spencer Street with the 15 point lead on Willie Cooley. Both Get men harnessed ready. in and set to go. Gladiators ready! Here come the Gladiators, Turbo and Viper. Willie up, gets high, he's got a yellow. Spencer with a good timing, but he collided. With Willie coming down, otherwise he would have had a, a good clear shot at it. Now Willie he's stuck Cooley. in midair. Willie Cooley has got the first goal of the match, trying to unwind himself in that bungee cord. Spencer Street once bungeed from 230 feet in the air, so he should be fairly comfortable doing this. But he didn't have turbo in his face. Oh, Nevertheless, he got two. Dynamic move there. Here comes Willie, unmolested. He went for the blue, got the yellow instead, and he's oh, going to score. Almost had a wow. blue. Spencer almost had a blue. 15 seconds to go. Turbo up a little too early. Spencer can do nothing but grab that center post. Turbo up early, but he knocked the pendulum right out of their reach. Last chance for both these men, and that looks like it's going to be it. But both Spencer Street and Willie Cooley pick up two yellow balls worth one point apiece. Give each of them two for this event. Spencer Street with a great effort. He gets up not only picking up one yellow ball, but actually with an opening here, has time to grab two. He uses a little bit of Dr. Pepe's technique, puts one in his mouth, carries one in his other hand. Not very pretty, but he gets them both in. So four events by the wayside and a look at our petroleum engineer, Spencer Street. We'll be back. Turbo the man has sought the name of the game. Event number five here in this preliminary round competition. And although he's on the trailing end of a 22-7 score, Willie Cooley has quickly become a crowd favorite here at Gladiator Arena. Of course, the first death contender we've ever had here. A five-time medalist in the Deaf Olympics. There a look at some of his trophies and medals. Also an outstanding scholar athlete at the Virginia School for the Deaf in high school. Great inspiration to everybody here. Willie's mission, of course, to try to hit that target located above Turbo. Failing to do so, the contenders can still pick up individual points by firing one of five weapons. Contender ready! Willie Cooley on his way and getting a big cheer from this crowd. I don't know where that one landed, high into the rafters here at Gladiator Arena. There's 
sets himself. This one has his shot a little bit high. Now it's station number three, 30 seconds left on the clock. Bring it down, Willie. Twenty seconds. Station number four. That one, oh man, right altitude, wrong direction. Now he's got two chances to hit that target if he can find out what kind of throw he has. He tries to lob one in there. That doesn't get it. Five seconds. If he gets up and run, he might have a chance, but I think time is going to expire right oh. there. But an excellent work by Willie Cooley. He's going to finish it out anyway. Five points. And so now the stage set for Spencer Street. Spencer should do very well in assault. He has a background of being something of a shooter. We have some film clips of him right here shooting some skeet. Cool. Check this out. Binga, binga. He's got a good straight aim. We'll see how he does when he has to aim at the likes of Turbo. Yeah, that is a big difference, isn't it, Larry? Skeet don't shoot back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a duck here. You ready for me, Bob? So ready, Turbo ready. will try to polish off Spencer Street. The kid's got some amazing quicks, though. Spencer taking his time at station number one. Turbo's gun, gun jamming momentarily. We've got 40 seconds. Uh-oh, <laughs> put a little dent in that platform that Turbo is standing on. That one just whizzes underneath the target. 25 seconds now. <laughs> Don't make him angry, Spencer. Still 10 ticks left on the clock. He could get the bonus point if he can cross that finish line. He stays out of harm's and Turbo's way and picks up six points to up his total to 28-12 over Willie Cooley. And quickly now, we move on to the women. Zapp has ascended the platform for the Gladiators. First up for the contenders, Yvonne Montalvo. Yvonne in some serious need of points. Maybe she can pick up a few here in Assault. Gladiator ready! Oh, right on top of the head. Zap, zaps her. Well, she's always been one of the more deadly of the gladiators when it comes to this event. She just showed us all why. Take a bow. You earned it, girl. Ron kind of shakes it off. Watch right here. She slides into position one. Thinks she's safe now from the cannon. Zaps her, but <laughs> boink right on top of the head's exactly right, Mike. He catches it right here. You have a great shot of it. Bird's eye view. Now she'll have to shake the cobwebs out. You know, that space is only about eight inches wide. Needless to say, Zap very accurate. So the doc is up next, and Elizabeth Pepe has an interesting story to tell. In the small central Florida town of De Leon Springs, Dr. Pepe is the quintessential country doctor. I feel like a cross between Marcus Welby and Doc Hollywood. Whether it's a snake bite wound or just a case of the measles, Elizabeth is there. And in the often hard times of small town life, she allows patients to pay her whatever they can afford. A crate of tomatoes, uh, baked goodies, you know, a duck. <laughs> her training came from a stint as a flight surgeon in the Army, but she's also a competitive bodybuilder and a champion powerlifter. Her first love, however, is practicing medicine with a human touch. A lot of people need hugs, and that's that's a part of medicine. You give them hugs when they need hugs. Well, she's not going to get a lot of warmth from Zap, I can tell you that here. <laughs> Seeing her life pass before her eyes. I guarantee I would not want to be out there against Zap. Doc so calculated, he lets that one fly and almost parted Zap's hair. Challenging Zap. 
a little bit. Come on, you want some of this? <laughs> I don't want any of it. <laughs> this station number two. Point the uh, rocket right us, out of here. Gonna give us more gray hairs than we want. Whoa. The bullseye, Doc, the bullseye. She has wasted an awful lot of time, just 15 seconds left. I'm not sure if Zap fired that weapon or Doc Pepe did. Five seconds to go. Right now, she's picked up only three points. She'd like to get this one off her fourth. I think she probably knew it. Shot it anyway, even though I had no chance of hitting the target. Smart Still move. four points for Dr. Elizabeth Pepe, and she now leads 16 to one after five events. Coming up next is the wall. Remember, at six foot three, sky's the limit. Be there. 32 feet of pure vertical, we call it the wall. It's our next event here between our two contenders. Street Cooley, there's a score after five events. All right, all right, I'll meet you up there. Okay. Spencer having a few laughs with Tower. That will be his pursuer, and chasing Willie Cooley, it will be Sabre. Again, the first man up in 60 seconds or less picks up 10 points. If both contenders make it, the second man up will get five. Again, the contenders given a 10 second head start. The key seems to be when you choose that inside line, just get over that first hump, and if you can't, you're in trouble. And already our two contenders in a heap of trouble, and down they go. They don't even get jump started. Willie said it was his least favorite event. And Spencer wasn't much more enthusiastic about it. And that, folks, is the way it turned out. Zonk, I know we got the Zonka straighter. Can I take this one? Do it. Just want to show you the spectacular athleticism of Sabre. Look at his reach, almost perpendicular to his torso. Willie gamely trying to hang on, but Sabre with that strength just wrenches him right off the wall. Now from another angle, I've never seen a man expend so much energy. What an effort. <laughs> uh, give me my toy back. <laughs> Okay, on to the women we move. Dr. Pepe and Yvonne Montalvo, there's how they stand, and hopefully they'll be a little bit better than the men were and make life a little bit harder, more difficult for our two gladiators, the diamond one and her partner, Sky. All right. Climb it like a fly. They have a large fly, Sky. The wingspan of a giant condor. We have seen her literally just stay on the floor and pull contenders off. Doctor said her goal was to get out of the reach of the gladiator within five seconds, and she's pretty close to doing that. Remember, sky has got that extra long reach, being six foot three inches tall. And there it is, she's got a toe hold on the doctor, now a ankle hold, and down she goes. Doc grabs her shoulder a little bit as she's jerked from the wall. And despite their best intentions, our female contenders don't fare much better than their male counterparts. Both Yvonne and Elizabeth come up empty. Mark Pepe with a good lead on the wall. Sky just doing her thing. Close in, gets a hold of the Doc's foot. Doc comes off reluctantly, sprained that shoulder a little bit. Well, one thing's for sure, Larry, this is her first season on the American Gladiator. Sky has been impressive. If you've seen Sky, you can guess how she got her name. It's a perfect name for me, with my height and my stature, you know, touching the sky. But most of all, sky's the limit. Just, you know, you can't go any farther than me. At six foot three and 185 pounds, Sky is an imposing figure wherever she goes. Whether it's her two hour morning workout at the gym, taking on all comers at racquetball, or blowing away the competition with her latest passion, the target range. See, the point is that they're all together, they're close. Target shooting is just, it's a great deal of fun, but you also learn to take control over the firearm and, and have respect for it and understand what it is. Just as all challengers better respect the awesome power of Sky. It's not because I'm playing unfairly, I'm just big and I'm there to do my job. And sometimes, stuff happens. <laughs> Welcome back to Gladiator Arena. Time now for event number seven, where we put the accent on the physical. That means it's crunch time, our crunch time event. 
Powerball, and you are looking at Tower, Viper, and Turbo, our three gladiators who will do battle against Spencer Street and Willie Cooley. Spencer has a 28-12 lead coming into this event, but Willie Powerball is his strength with his football Stay background. Spencer has a football background as well, co-captain of his Trinity University football team. Again, 45 seconds, the time limit. Contenders will try to score as many times as they can into one of five scoring cylinders. Goals, goals on the outside worth two points. A goal in the center cylinder worth three. And Powerball is brought to you by Nintendo, makers of Super NES. Nintendo, now you're playing with power, super power. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! Willie Cooley gets away from Turbo and hits that center cylinder. Spencer Street able to score. 30 seconds on the clock, and Spencer scores again in that outer cone. Again, outer cones worth two, middle cone worth three. That time, Willie really a little sneaky as he got by Turbo. 15 seconds left on the clock. Again, Willie nursing that bashed up chin. And time winding down. Willie Cooley scores one more, and time has expired. Let's total it up. Good effort all the way around by our Gladiators and our two contenders. Lots of points, lots of quickness, lots of moves. Spencer Street working on Turbo. Gets by him, Turbo gets a handful of jersey. Spencer still gets the score, but loses his jersey in the process. Down at the other end, check out Willie's moves. He slides underneath Turbo, takes advantage of the situation. He's very bright, very quick, hits that score in the center pond. Now from another angle, pretty good indication of why the Washington Redskins once gave this young man a tryout for their football team. Sometimes he just resorted to the quick little flick to get the job done. Pretty impressive performance by Willie Cooley. Here we go, another fun game of Powerball. Taking them down. Sky will be joined by Electra and Diamond in women's Powerball. Avon, just one point to show Get's for ready. her hard work this afternoon, and she has worked ready. hard in her defense. Today just belongs to the Gladiators. Avon, yeah, she got away from Electra. Tired her out, I think, going back and forth like that. Another nice move. Second degree black belt. She's quick. We'll stop the clock with 30 seconds. Dr. Pepe's down. What happened? It's a shoulder. It's a shoulder. He's injured before. It's the same shoulder she injured a little earlier in the wall. Evidently, it was jammed at the point she made contact with Electra. Where we're going to resume play with 30 seconds. The doc uh, bruised her shoulder earlier, banged it up again. But if anybody knows about her own conditions, it, it's certainly her. She one day wants to specialize in sports medicine. Right now, all she'd like to do is get by Sky. Meanwhile, Yvonne has done a better job of scoring here. <laughs> I can't quite. Electra's going, come on out, come on out. Can't quite make up her mind what to do. And as a result, Doc Pepe took advantage of it. Again, she falls on that shoulder. Ten seconds to go. The doc was talking about how important she thought hug therapy was. I don't think this is what she had in mind in Powerball. Severe hugs. Both women pick up four points, and the doctor will take a 25 lead going into the eliminator. Vaughn wisely taking advantage of a situation that arises with Doc Pepe's injury here as she gets slammed to the turf. Vaughn takes advantage of that situation one on one. Seeing Doc Pepe favoring that shoulder, you can only wonder if how much it's going to affect her in the eliminator. Well, she did give the thumbs up sign to our gladiators, but she might have been biting her lower lip. Powerball was a real confidence builder for Yvonne Montalvo. Pretty nifty move here on Electra. She gets Electra going in the other direction and reaches out to score there. 
This one, however, I'm not quite sure what Yvonne was thinking. I'm gonna go over here. No, I'm gonna go over there. Nah, I think I'll go over here. Nope, I'll go over there. The Montalvo two-step, we'll call it. Hey, save some for the Eliminator, Yvonne. It's next. It's the part of a, a engine in a car, and it's usually placed on a very high-performance car, which gives the car even that much more performance. And, uh, and, and I like to think that I'm packed with plenty of performance. That's a trip when you can leave the ground and go 25, 30 feet straight up in the air. I think every little kid dreams of being able to do that. Michael Jordan is the only one that can do it without a bungee. <laughs> Welcome back to the Gladiator Arena, and the time has come. The Eliminator will decide all. At the moment, Dr. Elizabeth Pepe has a 15-point lead, good for a seven-and-a-half-second head start on Yvonne Montalvo. But the karate instructor from the Bronx came on strong in Powerball and may be ready to roll. She's with Larry at the start line right now. Larry? Ron, what do you have to say to all your martial arts students back in the Bronx that are supporting you? Oh, I just want to tell them that I really love them, and. I won't give up. I'll try my best so they can be proud of me. Can't ask for anything more than that. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Larry, I'm sure they're already pretty proud of their, their teacher. She's poised and ready at the start line. And she's got to make up that deficit. On course for the Gladiators, as always, our penalty enforcers, if they need to do it, will be Electra and Zap underneath the hand mic and down the final straightaway. It's Siren and it's Diamond. And they've got that gauntlet cooking. And the Eliminator is brought to you by Mars. Mars, making life a little sweeter. The oldest contender in the women's competition, Dr. Elizabeth Pepe, trying to hang on on the hand bike, and down she goes. She is nursing a 10-year shoulder. She'll have to incur a 10-second penalty. That could be enough for Yvonne if she can get up that treadmill. She gets another chance. The doctor rolling along on that spinning cylinder. Now the cargo net. Where it's always a struggle. Yvonne now on the hand bike. She's got to really pump those legs. It's almost like riding a bicycle. Takes a lot of strain off your arms, too, as well, if you use your legs. Meanwhile, <laughs> our 38-year-old physician from De Leon, Florida, getting her arm checked out by one of our spotters up there to make sure she's all right. She's in, she insists that she is. And keep your fingers crossed here and keep your legs up, Doc. The one-point landing, she's got a final straightaway to go. She's not gonna set any land speed records here, but she has been persistent, she has been determined. And folks, she has done it, Art. Physician, karate instructor, just about everything has moved on to the second round. Doc, I know you're in a lot of pain. Number one, you're tired right now, but you're also in a little pain from that shoulder. Been an uphill battle all day with that. How's it doing? It hurts. It hurts. Well, uh, well I know it hurts, but you're going to have some time off now. Do you think you can prepare enough time to prepare for this next round of competition? I'm going to see if I can get some ultrasound ice, and it should be ready to go. I'll be ready. We want you back, and we want you 100%. Good luck in the next round. Thank you. Meanwhile, finishing up the course, Yvonne Montalvo. Not a particularly great day for her, but certainly a day that she'll remember. Certainly a day that Dr. Elizabeth Pepe will remember. We wondered about the health of her shoulder after what happened in Powerball, and watch here on the hand bike. This is a real gut check. She tried not to quit. She tried to hang on, but obviously that shoulder in pain, and down she went. It didn't stop her, however, from winning the race. One thing's for sure, Yvonne and Elizabeth know they have gone through a tough, tough day. Nice going, you two. 
In the men's competition, Lafayette, Louisiana's Spencer Street has amassed 32 points through seven events, but his 13-point lead on Willie Cooley is tenuous at best. A 6.5 second deficit isn't much for a man who can fly. Larry's with him at the start line. I'm here with Willie's interpreter, Norman Gallopin, who's been doing a fine job all day. Willie, I'd like to ask you one question. What do you have to say to all your deaf friends who are here supporting you today? Well, I'd like to say thank you to all the deaf people for making the travel here tonight. And thank you for being very supportive of me. And I appreciate it a lot. What's your strategy for making up this seven second deficit? Well, I'm gonna run as properly as I can. No messing up. Okay, good luck. Well, Larry, that's certainly the secret in the eliminator for people who have to overcome head start deficits. No messing up. And Willie left nothing to chance back home in Virginia. He practiced for this event by running up hills backwards. Underneath the hand bike, ready to impose a seven sec second penalty on the men, should they need to. Our Gladiator Cyclone and Turbo. And pumping up that gauntlet, it'll be Sabre and Tower. Willie won three medals, two goals in 1985 at the Deaf Olympics. Ready! Spencer Street on his way, but off the hand bike he goes. He's going to be detained for seven seconds. This could be the edge that Willie needs. Again, like I said, Willie Cooley can't fly. Can he stand up? Yeah, he, oh man, now he's gonna climb up that cargo net. Spencer Street flew across that spinning cylinder. Spencer Street, the first man on the zip line. Over the wall, down the final straightaway, Spencer Street will break the finish line. Here comes Willie Cooley. Had he not fallen on that spinning cylinder, he might have won this thing. But what an effort by both men. Spencer, great job. You've certainly taken your lumps, as that I can attest to. Take a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You've been in the thick of it all day. You have to be happy right now. Very happy, very happy indeed. Real excited. Competition out here is great. Just a world of fun. Well, congratulations and welcome to the next round. Okay, thanks very much. All right, partner. Just five feet eight, 170 pounds, Spencer Street packs a lot of punch. He's gonna be a man to be reckoned with. As he gets congratulations from his mom, Carol, and his dad, Spencer. Coming up next week, more exciting preliminary round action. Until then, for Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Gatley. So long from Gladiator Arena.